Hello. And in this video, we're going to explore another problem with least squares fitting. So in the previous section, we talked about ordinary least squares, or sometimes just called least squares. I'll abbreviate it OLS. And we know that ordinary least squares, the method you might have seen in a prior biology lab or a statistics class, tries to minimize the sum of the residuals. What do we mean by that is it means that for each uh, of our data points here, we look at the so-called residual, the difference in y between the data point and the line for each one. We square it because we want all these things to add. We don't want pluses and minus canceling each other. And so that's why we square it, the value, then we add them all up, and that's the quantity that we're trying to minimize. All right? We can manifestly see that the uncertainties are not included in this calculation whatsoever. There's no sigmas anywhere to be seen. So that's one problem that we've already mentioned. And it turns out there's actually another problem with least squares, which is going to be the subject of this section. We're going to use the same dummy data that I used in the previous section. So here's the table from the previous section where we've got some made up X's and Y's. And we're going to use these data to explore this other problem with least squares fitting. So what is the problem? The problem is that least squares fitting fits y as a function of x. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, that's what we want to do, is we want to fit the, the y as a function of x. Well, let's think about that a little bit more critically and explore what the consequences of that are. So here's a plot of y as a function of x for our dummy data. You can see the various points here in red with the error bars and all that good stuff. And then the best fit line that I've drawn. And we calculated it in the prior section, uh, 0.523x plus 4.184, okay? So this is sort of where we are up to now. Let's try something. Let's invert the data and plot x as a function of y. So what do I mean by that? Well, we can use the axes here to sort of get a you know, first grip on what we're doing is you can see the x-axis here goes to 24, now the y-axis goes to 24. So I'm switching x and y is what I'm doing, all right? So this first point here has an x value of 3 and a y value of 5. When I invert the data, the x value becomes 5 and the y value becomes 3. So again, swapping x and y. And I'm doing this for every single point in our data set, OK? Let's fit x as a function of y and compare the result to what we got before. To see how this works, I've made a little spreadsheet. So here it is. Here's our dummy data, the x and the y values that I've talked about. And we're going to do a fit of it, as you already know how to do, using the linest function in Google Sheets. So here is the y. Uh, here's the x. And I want B to be true. I want it to fit the intercept. And I'm going to tell it to turn on what's called the verbose flag, where we see all the stats of everything. All right. So it thinks a little bit. And here is our fit. I'm going to label it nicely. It makes it easier for us to read. All right. So there's our fit. Let's put that in the middle. Nice, easy label. And let's understand a little bit of what we're looking at. So this is the slope, as you already know. This quantity is the intercept, B. This is the uncertainty in the slope. And then this is the uncertainty in the intercept, B. Uh, these other quantities are other statistics, other important things. But we're not going to look at them in this lab, so we are just going to kind of cross them out and ignore them for now. All right, so this is sort of where you should be up to this point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to flip x and y. So I'm going to make a new, a new table down below, x and y. And I'm going to take my y values here, copy them, and put them where my x's should be. Okay? And then I'm going to take my x's and copy them and put them where my y's should be. 
okay? This is equivalent to doing this change of graph where we go from y as a function of x to x as a function of y, right? I've switched x and y. So now I'm going to go and fit this result. Linest, same thing, right? Usual game, here's my y's, what used to be my x's. Here's my x's, what used to be my y's. Again, we want the uh, intercept to float, and let's turn on all the other stats. All right. So let's label things again. So there is my fit. Now my fit at y as a function, x as a function of y. Once again, we got the slope and the intercept. We've got the uncertainty in the slope and we've got the uncertainty in the intercept all right and once again these more advanced statistics we're not going to use for the course of this lab uh, so i'll cross them out to sort of remind us of that now we've got a slope and we've got an intercept but this is from fitting y I mean, x is a function of y. So our slope and our intercept are, are very, very different from what we got when we got y as a function of x. But I mean, that should make sense, right? We, we inverted the data and then fit it. If we want to be able to compare these results, we need to flip back, right? We need to take the result that we got when we fit x as a function of y and sort of put it back to y as a function of x. So how do we do that? How can we get equations that we can then compare with each other? So let's look at a simpler example to see how to do that. So here's a table of data, one, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight, and there's a nice little plot of it. And this is pretty clearly y equals two x, right? It's perfect data, y equals two x. If I invert it, what do I get? Okay, so now my y values, 2, 4, 6, 8, have become my x values, and my x values have become my y values, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's the little plot of those data. This graph is described by x equals 1 half y, right? <clears throat> so if I take 2 and I divide it by 1, I get, I mean, uh, by 2, I get 1. So these, so the slope of this graph is 1 half, and the slope of this graph is 2. So this tells us how to convert back from an inverted y, x as a function of y, back to y as a function of x. We take the inverted slope, delta x over delta y, back to the you know, comparable slope, y over x, just by doing 1 over. So just like we see here, if I wanted to compare these two, I'd do 1 over a half, and that would bring me back to two. So let's do that for our data, our dummy data. So here's our inverted data where I plotted x as a function of y here. And here is our fit of that inverted data that we got from Linest. We can see the slope is uh, 1.686 and the intercept is minus 5.785. So there is our fit. I'm doing this kind of weird no notation, x to y and y to x, to help us remember that this is all inverted, right? We want to get back to something we can compare to what we started with, which is y as a function of x. Well, first things first, we convert the slope. As we saw in the previous slide, how do we do that? We just do one over. So the slope that we can compare is one over 1.686 or 0.593, okay? Now, what about the intercept? For the intercept, we need to remember this other important feature of the ordinary least squares that I discussed in a previous section, that the ordinary least squares fit will always go through the point with the average x and the average y, this x bar, y bar point. And this is a feature by uh, how the least squares is constructed, but again, it should kind of make sense that you would want your fit to fit the average value. And I said that this was a feature we're going to use throughout this lab, and here we go, how to use it. 
So if we want to figure out the intercept for our comparable line, we use the fact that our fit is going to pass through the intercept. The average point for our dummy data is 10.705 and 9.781, which I could easily figure out just from coming up here and just doing an average, right, of those. And you see I get the 10.7 and the average of those and I get the 9.78 for X and Y. So that gives me an X and Y value. I've got my corrected slope. And by putting my average X and my average Y with my corrected slope, I can calculate a intercept value for B. And so this gets me a fit where I fit X is a function of Y, not Y as a function of X. I fit X as a function of Y. I fit this over here and then put it back into Y as a function of X. Okay. So let's compare these two graphs. So here on the left, we've got the original best fit from Linest where I fit Y as a function of X, you know, the process you're already familiar with at this point. And then in the yellow, the lighter color, I fit X as a function of Y and then convert back. And we see that we get different results. Now the results might not be very big, they might be covered by the uncertainties, but they are different. And this is actually because of what the least squares algorithm does. It, calcul it tries to minimize the residuals in Y, completely ignoring any differences in X. Now, if your X values are exact or have super small uncertainties or stuff like that, then this isn't really a problem. But if you have reasonable uncertainties in X, which of these fits should you use? Should you use Y as a function of X or should you fit X as a function of Y and invert? It's not really clear on which one to use. And this is the problem with least squares fitting is if you have uncertainties in both X and Y, you would get different results depending upon which way you do it. Okay, so this is sort of the key takeaway is that you get different results depending on if you plot Y as a function of X or if you fit X as a function of Y, you get different answers. Now, as a second point, what about the uncertainties in all of this? Right. If you use Linest with the last argument set to true, as we just did, you get a whole bunch of stuff. Right. And we've seen that here in our fit from the Google Sheet. Right. You get a slope, you get an intercept and a bunch of other stuff. And I've told you that these first two things are the uncertainty in the slope and the uncertainty in the intercept. So we're just going to look at those here, get a new table that's a little bit easier for us to focus on just what we need. So here we have the slope and the intercept and the uncertainty on each for our inverted fit. So that is here. So this is where we have fit X as a function of Y before we've gone back, okay? Now, you've seen that we don't actually use this value at all. We take the slope, we invert it, and then we recalculate the intercept after we've inverted it to using the fact that the line has to pass through the average X and the average Y. So at least we don't have to worry about that. But we do still have this uncertainty on this slope. And how would we get from here to an uncertainty on a slope of Y as a function of X, right? We've got a slope for X as a function of Y with an uncertainty, but we want the other way. How would we do that? Well, let's think, we have a value for delta x, delta y. We also have an uncertainty on that value. We know that to go from delta x, delta y to y over x, we just do one over. How could we do this? Oh, the Monte Carlo propagation method from the first lab. So how would you do it? You go in, you create a spreadsheet, you do a bunch of trials, do a norm inverse, all that sort of stuff from your first lab, and you could use that to propagate your uncertainty into a slope of y as a function of x. 
So everything in this lab builds one on the other. So summary of the problems with ordinary least squares. Uh, first off, the one we've talked about a couple of times and we still haven't actually dealt with is that there's no consideration on the uncertainties of the measurements. So that's a problem that, frankly, we still need to deal with. The second problem that we've explored in this video is that the process tries to minimize the sum of the residuals in the y direction only. Look at this graph here. We can see that only the y direction is being considered. We don't even look to minimize the distance this way. And this can be a problem in, with certain data sets. And you'll often see ordinary least squares fits used in research. And even when these limitations mean that it might actually not be the appropriate thing to do. So in the rest of this lab, we will be looking at how to overcome these two limitations. This concludes this video.